Here at Boku University at the Extremophile Center, we are working on a project called the Black Yeast or the Black Fungi. This means that we are actually working with a very special group of fungi, which is characterized by very dark cells, which are encrusted with melanin. And these fungi occur in very special habitats, like we find them in the deserts, in semi-arid areas, in cold deserts like Arctica and Antarctica, but also in hot deserts, and the fungi inhabit rocks. So they live on the rock surface, but also within the rocks. And what we are doing here is that we are trying to understand how these fungi are so extremely stress resistant. So which mechanisms on the cellular level make them resist high UV radiation, even radioactivity, uh, desiccation, low nutrients, and other sorts of stress. So this is what, we, what we're trying to find out. The scope of it is that we try to understand how stress resistance is uh, working in the cell and what can we learn and transfer to the human cell. So transfer into a biotechnological application, pharmaceutical use, or also in medicine. Uh, when you're working with black fungi, you have a very interesting workflow, which starts in the fields, sampling of fungi from the rocks and ends up on the chip when we, when we load the transcriptome on the, on the chip. So the first steps of my work are really going out to the Arctic environment or to other desert environments and take samples there. So I was in Greenland in last summer taking fresh samples from rock surfaces bringing the samples to the lab, isolating the fungi, and then we continue the work with the pure cultures in the lab. And the pure cultures are then treated uh, with different stress conditions in a very special machine that we have here at Boku, which is really unique in Europe. We call it the environmental emulation system. And this chamber is able to simulate all stress conditions that you can imagine. So in one chamber and at the same time, we can simulate UV stress, temperature, humidity, down from the oceans, we can simulate up to the highest mountains of this world. We can, we can uh, change the pressure, we can change the different gases like ozone and oxygen and nitrogen, so everything can be simulated there. And we stress the cells inside of this machine. And once we take out the cell material, we extract the RNA and then we make the library and we sequence the transcriptome. So the aim is to compare transcriptomes of stressed cells under different stress conditions and to learn what, which genes are uh, then transcribed uh, during these processes of stress, during the conditions of stress. For us, uh, the ion proton was really the machine of choice because it is a really outstanding technology. We wanted to work without a laser because we know that laser technologies are more sensitive. So the ion proton for us is a very robust tool, which we have a, a benchtop uh, machine with a very high throughput, which was important for us. And it's compared to other technologies for us, it was also affordable and it is a relatively cheap technology. So we can really have a high throughput, which we need for our science and we can, we can afford it. And we have a good coverage and a good output from this machine. And so for fungi, which have a comparatively big genome already, if you compare it to bacteria, for example, uh, we still get a very good coverage with it and it is easy to handle for us. So for example, the library preparation is automized, so we have the machine for that, the library builder, which is a big help for us too. So we have a, a nice workflow and a big data output. So for us, it is the, it's the perfect tool for our aims. In the moment, we are working on this black yeast project with high pressure, and I, we will do that for the next three years and hopefully longer. 
Uh, at the same time, we are working on other microbes that inhabit not rocks in the nature, but rocks of cultural heritage, like sculptures, facades and buildings, and also on microbes that inhabit paintings, wall paintings, precious pieces of cultural heritage. Because we know that fungi are one of the most important important agents of biodeterioration of cultural heritage. It's not wind and weather, and it's mostly microbes, including bacteria, archaea, and fungi. So we want to understand what happens on the objects and what is uh, dangerous for the objects. Of course, the final aim is to find methods to stop biodeterioration and to prevent biodeterioration of such objects. And what we did by now was a molecular analysis by based on genetical fingerprints, clone libraries. But we, what we really want to start in the next year is doing metagenomes of pieces of cultural heritage that are deteriorated by microbes. And doing a metagenome from a very, very tiny amount of sample would be a big step forward in this uh, scientific field. So what we can analyze really from tiny samples like just cotton swabs from precious paintings is uh, we can analyze the full microbial community. We can uh, draw, we can interpret the by deterioration, we can interpret the origin of a piece of art. For example, we can, we can interpret in which soil was it buried because the microbes are characteristic for certain soils. We can even, hopefully, analyze in which hands was this object of art during the last centuries because we can detect the DNA of microbes but also on humans.